Hey guys, welcome back. Today I'm doing the book freakout tag. I cannot, well, mid-year book freakout tag. I can't believe it's already July. That's insane to me. And it's pouring outside right now, so I apologize for any ambient noise that's playing in the background. We have my cat. We have my huge stack of books, which is like half my height. And let's get into it. I have a little list here, so I can't remember all of them. My cat is totally going to knock this stack over by the end of this. But let's go into the first question. The first question is the best book you've read so far in 2023. And first on the list is, of course, Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies. I mean, you just can't go wrong with this book. It is so precious and just like beautifully written. It is about Emily Wilde, of course, and she is a researcher and she is researching fairies in a, not a desolate land, but it's, you know, a small little town, very small population, everyone's really clicky and close and she's just not a friendly person until her rival shows up and is deciding he wants to do his research there as well. So it is very fun. I think you can tell by the title, there's fairies, there's fae. Emily gets herself in some pickles, and 10 out of 10. This was one of my five-star reads. I've actually had quite a few this year, but let's go on to the next one. There's also a sequel coming out for this, which I'm real excited about, but I don't think it's until next year. Next on the list is Happy Place by Emily Henry. I absolutely ate this book up. I'll eat anything by Emily Henry, and this is about a group of friends who vacation every year together at a, like this girl's vacation home and they are I'm like being lazy and I don't want to hold the book up they are going to their last visit the vacation home is being sold they never get to go back again and the couple that was like the iconic couple of the friend group broke up but they're like we can't ruin this whole vacation so they decide to fake date and my cat's about to hop. Yep. <laughs> they decide to fake date. And you know how that goes. Fake dating. It never just ends at fake dating. I loved the concept of this, especially because it wasn't like fake dating. And they like didn't know each other or anything. They just met. This is like fake dating and they had dated previously. So they have like a good connection. And this story is just like so beautiful and it's found family like that's the whole core of it is that they're like each other's family and the girl like the main character is like struggling with like her career choices and like going to she went to school for the wrong thing and it's just very nice I love it and I think that this is like amazing book for someone who like just graduated college I think this would be like a perfect story for that because it's kind of like that's what it is it's like they're at the cusp of life and everything goes downhill from there. Just kidding. <laughs> so next question is the best sequel you've read so far. And let's go on to the first one, which I don't think anyone will be surprised by. And this is Words of Radiance by Brandon Sanderson. This is book two in the Stormlight Archive. And this is not the last time we're going to hear about Brandon Sanderson in this video. This, the first book, crazy. I loved it. It was like 10 out of 10, five stars. This one, 20 out of 10. The bajillion stars. It like, I didn't think it was possible to surpass, um, what's the first one? Wave Kings. The Wave Kings. And this one did it. And it did it hard. It is such a good book. And you can't really like say too much about like a sequel without giving away the first one. So I'm just gonna leave it at there's magic. It's a beautiful story about warriors and war and politics and it is just fantastic the characters i would die for them i would fight with them you just like get such a good connection and i've said this before i've never like read a book this big that i've just like been consumed in the whole time like usually when i reach like midway to the end i'm like so over it did not happen with this one or any of the ones I've read so far. I think I've only read, no, I've read the first, nope, just the first two. I thought I read the third one too, but I did not yet. But, oh, if you love like a good epic fantasy, Brandon Sanderson is the one to check out. 
The next one I have on here is The Ballad of Never After by Stephanie Garber, and I loved this book. I actually did a reading vlog of me reading this. I'm almost positive, <laughs> but I read like this whole series. There's only two books out so far, but I read both of them in like literally a day. I was so obsessed with them. This one, the first one I loved, don't get me wrong, but it wasn't like perfect for me. This one, oh, was everything and more. Like this it did what the first book like didn't give me, it gave me in this one. And again, it's a sequel, but it's about a girl named Evangeline Fox who is going to a different place, a wintry place. It's a wintry setting. It's beautiful. It's like a little winter town. And she's going to a ball and she encounters a person that she has to work with, I would say, work with. And he is the bad guy. He is evil to the core. He does not love anyone. He cannot love people. And he's just like a cold-hearted person. But you know how, you know how that goes. So, <laughs> 10 out of 10. The third one, coming out soon. Very excited. This one, mm, chef's kiss. Perfect. Okay, what's our next question? The next one is new releases you haven't read yet but want to. Okay, so the first one, I actually have it, but I didn't grab it. It's like over there and I'm not gonna grab it. So <laughs> it is Love Theoretically by Ali Hazelwood. It'll be up here on the screen so you can see its beautiful cover. And this is another one of Ali Hazelwood's iconic science romances. And I actually am not gonna lie. I feel like I should grab it. Okay, give me a second, intermission. Okay. Intermission ended. This is Love Theoretically <laughs> by Ali Hazelwood. And like I said, science-based romance. And it is about a girl named Elsie. Her name is Elsie. And she is a physicist who is also an adjunct professor. You know, she's trying to get tenure. She's trying to just make some money. She's you know, you know how it goes. She's not making a lot of money. And she runs a fake dating service where she pretends to be a fake girlfriend for people. And she, one of her favorite clients, she runs into his, her, his <laughs> older brother, who is her arch nemesis. Oh, we love that. We love a good arch nemesis type of story. And he's just cold hearted and she doesn't like him. And you know how that goes. They probably will end up loving each other. That's usually, typically, how these stories go. I love Allie Hazelwood. I am very excited. She has a couple more books coming out. And she's writing a, a what is it, a vampire? It's like a vampire love story. Which, good for you, girl. That's so different <laughs> than what she's done. She's, I think, pretty much only done, like, these science romances. Because she's, like, a scientist. And... I'm very excited to see her venture out. The next, oh, let's see, the next thing on the list. So the next ones I don't actually own, and that is The Book That Wouldn't Burn. Right here, you can see it's beautiful. This one's so pretty. It has, like, the prettiest cover, and I am obsessed with it. It's based in a library. I think, you know, of course, chef's kiss on the library setting. I love anything that's based in a library. I've heard a lot of good things about it. So I'm very excited to check that one out. I've been trying to find it. I go to Barnes & Noble and they don't have it in stock. And I don't know, I, I just, I get satisfaction from finding them in person instead of ordering them online. So we'll see if I cave and just order it online. And the next one is She is a Haunting. And this one also has a very cool cover. This one came out in February, so I'm a little bit behind. It was one of my anticipated releases for this year. And I have not read it yet. But it looks good. It's like a YA thriller. I think it's a thriller. It's kind of like spooky thriller type. Think of, um, gosh, what is that book that I read? No, I'm not gonna be able to remember. There's another spooky artist, artist, a spooky author that I really love. And this gives me the same vibes. So I'm very excited to check it out, even though I should have by now. And I see it at Barnes & Noble all the time. I'm low-key waiting for it to come out on paperback because that has to happen soon. Hopefully. Okay. The next ones on here are the... Well, the next question. 
is most anticipated release for the rest, oh sorry, the rest of the year of 2023, if we all forgot what year it was. And the first book I have on here is Sword Catcher by Cassandra Clare. And this is her first adult fantasy that she's coming out with. I'm super excited for it. And again, beautiful cover. Let's see if I can find like a little synopsis. I feel like books that I don't actually like own or physically have in front of me like I think they look good but I have no idea what they're about and I probably did at one point but it just goes out of my brain once I'm not thinking about it anymore but okay it's an epic fantasy series amazing and obviously Cassandra Clare wrote the Shatterhunter series so I'm assuming you know this is probably gonna be a long one I would make the assumption this is book one and there's orphans, criminals, rich nobles. Uh, it seems pretty cool. And I think that this is like... Her other books were totally like New York City, like modern, what's that called? Urban fantasy. And this one seems less urban. I don't think this is urban at all. Ah, oh, Forbidden Love. Amazing. War. Chaos. <laughs> Those are all the words that I pick up when I'm skimming. Yeah, so I'm excited for that one. I think it's gonna be real good. I have not read all of Cassandra Clare's books. I know there's like a whole hosh posh of series. I've really only ever read Shadowhunter and I keep meaning to go into the next series but I always forget like what order I'm supposed to read them in. So I just need to do some research and stop being lazy. Okay, the next is, let's see, oh, A Study in Drowning by Ava Reed, which I'm really excited about. This is a, well, I think it's YA, and it is like a dark academia, and she wrote, um, what was it called? Everyone would know it, I just can't remember what the name of it is. It is a dark academia, 10 out of 10, I love a good dark academia, so I'm excited. And of course, the final book is A Curse for True Love by Stephanie Garber. So that is the third book in the um, Once Upon a Broken Heart series, which we've already talked about. We already know the gist. And book two left off. Like, when I read the last page, I literally sat there dumbfounded, staring at the book for like five minutes. I was like, is this it? Luckily, I read it after she had already announced that she was doing like a... It was going to be a three book series, a trilogy, <laughs> as you would call it. And I know that there was people who read it thinking it was a duology and was like, what just happened? I could not imagine reading that thinking it was a duology. I think I would have just like had to go into like hiding for like two days and just sat in like my chair and stared at the wall because I would have been so upset. So I'm really excited to see how this story's gonna end. Though I'm really sad I want more. I want more than three books. Give me more. I want a long series. Okay, next question. Biggest surprise that I've read so far. And the first one, I actually just finished this. And this is The Wolf Den by Elodie Harper. This is a... I always want to say it's like a Greek That's mythology. Funny. My Apple Watch has done this like three times today. And I haven't... I'm not talking to you. Okay, so this is like a Greek, it's not a Greek mythology really, like there's no like, I don't think there's mythology in this. It's about ancient Pompeii. That's, I think that's what I'm going to categorize this as. It's just like an ancient Pompeii story. They're like wearing togas and stuff like that. And it is about a girl who, her name is Amara, and she is a, she works at a brothel that, well, she doesn't really work there. She's a slave at a brothel where she's forced to be employed there. She doesn't, I don't think she really gets paid. I mean, she gets a little bit, but you know how it goes. And she was the daughter of a doctor and she had like a good life and was raised like, you know what I mean, in a good household, raised to be a wife. And then her father passes away and she ends up being sold into slavery. So a brothel lord whatever you want to call it so her owner 
buys her and he owns the wolf den which is a brothel in Pompeii and she is from um she's from Ephidne Ephidne I feel like I'm pronouncing that wrong she's Greek and so she had to kind of learn to adjust to this new culture and new society while being thrown into prostitution and it is just about like this group of prostitutes who work in this brothel who are just like going through struggles and like being treated horribly by men. It's about the extreme power dynamic between women and men in the time where especially like slaves no matter how you were raised like or how like whatever your life situation was you could just be instantly thrown into like the complete opposite. Like this girl expected she was gonna marry and live a happy comfortable life and this is what happens to her and that's like a common theme for a lot of the slaves. But it is about her and her very beautifully written feminine rage about she, how she is unhappy and kind of her fight to try to get out of, like, slavery. She wants to be free and you can kind of see how, like, because I think this is her first year in slavery, so you get to see, like, how her transition goes. Yeah. Very good. Very good. Five stars. Loved it. So I actually kind of anticipated it not to be like that fantastic. Not that I didn't think it was going to be good, but I was like, I had never heard anyone talk about it. And I was like, oh, I'm sure it'll be fine. You know what I mean? I like that kind of like that Greek type style. And I loved it. Beautiful, beautiful surprise. The next one is Sorcery of Florence by Margaret Rogerson. And this is a story about a girl who works in a library and she gets falsely accused of a crime. And then she all of a sudden has to solve the crime and the person who actually caused the crime with a, another gentleman who is supporting her and trying to help her fight the evil. So this has magic and grimoires, like books that have like feelings and emotions and talk and like, very good. So good. And I kind of thought it was going to be like, like a mid. I was like, oh, this is going to be good. I read it and I was obsessed with it, so... The next, oh, my phone's upside down. Uh, the next one is new favorite character. Oh, new favorite author. Sorry, I'm skipping around. And that would be Brandon Sanderson, of course, as one of the top, specifically the Stormlight Archive series. I just really love this series, and I think he writes just fantastic, like, unmatched fantasy stories. And, you know, we're going to leave it at that. Nice and simple. And the next one is Stephanie Garber, and she wrote the Once Upon a Time, Once Upon a Broken Heart, and the Caraval series. I liked them both, but her writing style is just so beautiful and flowery and just has like such good descriptions. It feels really magical. That's why I think that she's, you know, really great because of the ambiance she can, she creates. I just like smacked my tripod. The, I feel like the settings and everything, the way she describes stuff is just very good. So the next is new favorite character. I guess we can just like pick back up my uh, Brandon Sanderson book because of course it is Kaladin from the Stormlight Archive. He is like a slave, but he was a warrior. I, I'm reading lots of slave books recently. And he becomes what they're called as bridge boys who have to carry the bridges out for the armies to cross. And they're kind of like there to essentially take a lot of the casualties so that the people who are fighting against them pretty much focus on them while the army can actually go across. They're just like human distractions and he is just such like a strong and powerful character. The way he like, the way he's described and the way he feels things is just so good and you feel bad for him like, not feel bad for him but like you just want him to have something good. Brandon, give him something good. Why do all the bad things happen, Calvin? He is by far one of the best characters in the whole entire series. All right. The next one is A Book That Made You Cry. And this one, honestly, is probably kind of shocking. I cry a lot. I'm a big crier. I love to cry at the end of a book. It's very cathartic. But this one I chose is Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid. And the, one, the reason I chose this is because I think that it's like not a sad book really but the ending of it I sobbed like a baby it was just like this is just such a good story the tv show yeah I don't want to talk about it I just feel like this story is a lot about like 
women and being confident in yourself, but also like the dichotomy between women who don't feel confident in themselves versus ones that do. And they kind of just like didn't do that in the TV show. They kind of just like made them all like insecure in themselves and that's like not how some of the characters are written. So book, great. It's about a girl, obviously, and her name is Daisy and she joins a band. And it's just about the story of the band traveling and getting like re like forming relationships with each other and eventually breaking apart. It's written in an interview format. It's very good. The next one is a book that made you happy. I have two. The first one is The Wisteria Society of Lady Scoundrels by India Holen. And this is so funny and quirky and like it just <laughs> I giggled like 99% of this book. It is about a girl named Cecilia and she is a lady scoundrel, a pirate. And she is essentially like just doing piratey stuff and she has to rescue the other pirates from bad guys. It's very good. It's very witty. Like this is not like a high stress book. Like you're gonna read this and like laugh the whole time. So good. There's some romance in there. But honestly like I would feel like the romance is not the main thing in this. It's a small aspect. The next book is Anne of Green Gables by Lucy Maud Montgomery. Montgomery? How did I just pronounce that? And this is a classic story. It's about Anne who is an orphan and she is adopted by Marilla and oh my gosh why can I not Matthew Cuthbert and she is kind of just like about her growing up and she is just such this like magical little girl that like all of these horrible things have happened to her. She's an orphan like she's been through a lot and she is just so like happy and joyful and she brings like life into everyone. She gives people like joy and even like people who are like oh sour like sour people she like brings out the good in them. So I really like this story. I think Anne is so cute and adorable and I love her so much. The next is a favorite book to movie adaptation. The first is of course Heartstoppers by Alice Osman and this is a graphic novel about two boys who fall in love and it's about like discovering your sexuality and everything like that and so good. The TV show was like spot on, amazing. The character casting was A+. plus. They added more stuff into it but like it wasn't like they added this stuff and it like took away from the story or ruined any aspect of the story. It was like they added things and it just enhanced the story which is what you should do in an adaptation. The next one is, it's not new but I read Speak and watched the movie and this is by Lori Halsey Anderson and this was so beautiful and I felt like the movie which has Kirsten Stewart as the um, main character of course and it is just very well written. The movie was very closely like relating to the book and I really liked it. Alright. Oh, we're on the last- no we're not. Oh, we're close. We're close. We are on Most Beautiful Book You've Bought. I have quite a few. The first one is Braiding Sweetgrass by Robin Wool Kimmerer. And this is, oh, it's so pretty. It is like a canvasy cover. It has a little green ribbon. And it is, is Indigenous Wisdom, Scientific Knowledge, and the Teachings of Plants. Oh, I just think this is so pretty. My friend actually recommended this book to me. And I think this is like a good book where you can just sit and like read some, like you don't have to sit and read the whole thing in one sitting. Like you can sit and read some chapters and put it down and come back to it. And I just think, oh, it's so beautiful. I love it. Next I have, I think this is a common one, Divine Arrivals by Rebecca Ross. And this is my fairy loot edition. I can never remember which, oh, I'm pretty sure this is fairy loot. Don't get me wrong. But it is so pretty. I love this versus the original cover. This is like gorgeous. Not that the original cover isn't pretty, but oh, it's so stunning. The little letters on the edge. It is about a girl who is writing letters to her brother who is in war. And there is a boy who is like, I think her rival. They're kind of both going for the same thing. And 
he is reading her letters and like answering her like sending her letters back and everything like that so I think this is very pretty oh and the, the end papers though they low-key kind of give me Addie LaRue and the hardcover is stunning I love this book it's so pretty moving on to the next one which is V.E. Schwab The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue and this is the paperback special edition for Barnes & Noble oh it's so pretty I just love the graphic on here and the gold foiling it has a little flappy oh, so I love this so much it has like the roughed edges I always forget what that's called 10 out of 10. One of my favorite books and I was very excited when that like edition came out. Had to snatch it up. Okay. The next one is books you still want to read this year. So I have a couple. More than a couple. I really want to like kind of get down on my TBR like physical TBR. I just have book reading and book buying two separate hobbies and I have an addiction to both of them. But the first one is Ariadne by Jennifer Saint. And this is like a Greek story retelling. Um, I love me a good Greek story. And it's of course about Ariadne. I'm totally probably butchering her name. But very excited. Love a good Greek story. The next we have is Withering Heights by Emily Bronte. I've been meaning to read this book for like ever. Solely because it's uh, Bella's favorite book in Twilight. My cat is being crazy out there. Solely because it's, yeah, Bella's favorite book. That's honestly, it's such a shallow reason for me to want to read this, but that's it. That's why I want it. That's why I want to read it. And this is a uh, romance. He's more myself than I am. Whatever our souls are made of, his and mine are the same. Beautiful. But I think it's like a tragic romance. Next is Ninth House by Lee Bardugo. And this is a dark academia about a girl going to Yale who joins I think it's like a secret society is essentially what it is and it like doesn't make sense why she got into Yale or anything like that so fun and her final book we're at the end and this is A Darker Shade of Magic by V.E. Schwab I've wanted to read this for a really long time it's about like these two versions of London and there's a girl, I think it's a girl, I can't remember honestly, there's a person who can travel between the two types of London and yeah I think there's romance in here. I love the little like graphic pages, like the little chapter, so pretty. I also just really love V. Schwab so I'll read anything by her. The last thing on here is favorite content creators. Um. These people are like the people I definitely watch like 100% more than anything else. Like anytime they post, I do be watching the episode. And that is Katie is reading. So cute. She has amazing long vlogs. I think like most people probably know who she is if you're on this on book talk. If you watch book videos, I think that she's very popular to see. The next is Reagan from Peru's Project. Hers are fun. She does a lot of fantasy based stuff and it's she does vlogs but they're more like lifestyle-y like reading and lifestyle so she does more of like she shows herself cooking and oh she has the best clothes 10 out of 10 her outfits are amazing and the last one is Carrie can read and she does like she'll read these whole series and just like go like slam through them she'll go through the whole thing and it tends to be like bad series not bad series but like she'll do um She's done, oh gosh, what are they? Oh, the Crave series. Like, books that, like, I, I like it because they're books that, like, I don't necessarily want to spend my time reading, but I want to know what they're about. <laughs> so, like, Crave, Vampire Academy, she does books like that, and it's very entertaining. But that is everything. I can't believe, oh, happy mid-year. Amazing. I'm so excited to see what more bookish things come in the rest of the year, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!